And good afternoon. This is Cynthia Kanaki with the ALS Association. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. The ALS Association is committed to bringing information and education related to research, care, and quality of life to the ALS community. Because ALS has an impact on the respiratory system, it's important that clinicians, diagnosed persons, and family members understand the options available regarding respiratory care and support. And while the ALS Association does not endorse specific treatment or equipment, we are pleased to have representatives from Ventec Life Systems here today to discuss the features, benefits, and access process related to a new FDA-approved class of ventilator, the multifunction ventilator. As always, please discuss your care goals and appropriate treatment options with your physician and clinical team. Joining us today um, are Chris Brooks. Chris is the Managing Director at Ventec Life Systems. He received his bachelor's and master's degree from George Washington University and was previously Director of Global Affairs at Hilton Worldwide. Chris has been with Ventec Life Systems since June of 2016. Also with him are Kelly Sergeson. She is a bachelor's level prepared registered nurse and board certified case manager. Kelly's been with Ventec Life Systems since earlier this year. Welcome, Chris and Kelly. Thank you for carving time out of your day to join us and to bring this vital information to people living with ALS. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, really appreciate uh, everyone taking the time this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm here in lovely Seattle, Washington, where we are based, and the sun is shining, so we consider that a good day uh, in November. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think we still have a couple minutes, and folks might be joining. Um, as Cynthia mentioned, uh, the phone line is muted, but if you do have questions, please use the chat box. We'll be paying attention to that. We'll definitely take some time at the end to make sure we get to all of those questions. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and dive in. I want to make sure that this is advancing. Perfect. Um, so today we're going to give you a little bit of a background about Voxin, uh, the new multifunction ventilator. Uh, not so new anymore. I've been uh, FDA cleared now for just about three years. I'll give you an overview of what it is, how it works, and then we'll dive deep into uh, how to gain access to Voxin, what the reimbursement process looks like, what the um, interaction with your physician, with your DME providers and insurance providers, what does that whole process look like to gain access to something uh, like Voxin. Just there we go. Uh, so a brief inter introduction of Ventec Life, overview of traditional devices, and then uh, how Voxin is different the benefits of integrated care, and then how to get Voxin, and then uh, we'll also introduce you uh, to Kelly, who is new on the team and uh, will be a great resource to many of the folks on the call. So Ventec Life Systems, uh, as I mentioned, we are based uh, in Bothell, Washington, just north of Seattle, Washington. The uh, company was founded in 2012. You can see some of us here this summer partaking in the five-year anniversary of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, we, the team here was uh, really, uh, the company was founded by Doug DeVries, who's the creator of the LTV, uh, which stood for laptop ventilator, the first truly portable uh, ventilator that allowed people who were on mechanical ventilation to leave a hospital and uh, live a mobile life and be at home. Uh, the team has been a part of uh, nearly 20 different FDA cleared uh, ventilators throughout the decades of the team's involvement in this space. So while this is a newer company and a newer ventilator, uh, the team has been doing this for quite some time. Um, Doug DeVries himself has been in mechanical ventilation for nearly four decades. Uh, he is particularly connected to the ALS community. Uh, as I mentioned, he created the LTV, the first truly portable ventilator, um, allowed people to leave the hospital and be at home on a ventilator. Uh, however, his uh, father uh, was diagnosed with ALS and elected, as many do, to not continue life with a ventilator. And that really got Doug thinking about, you know, why, why was that? And obviously that's a personal decision. There's a lot that goes into those decisions. Um, but, you know, for Doug, as he was talking to other ventilator users and others, family members of folks who had made that decision, uh, really kind of learned that, um, you know, 
the big challenge was the lack of integration. And, you know, most ventilator patients need so many other different devices. And while they had a portable ventilator, the LTV that Doug had created 20 years ago, they didn't actually have the ability to really be uh, mobile and, uh, and live kind of a, a high quality life. So that got Doug to kind of come out of retirement and begin to think about, you know, what should mechanical ventilation look like? And if we could design something from the ground up with input from patients and caregivers about what they want these devices to look like, um, you know, could he come up with something better? And so that was over a decade ago that Doug began working on some of the early concepts for what is now today Voxen. Um, for those of you just joining us, uh, we will be taking questions at the end. Your lines are muted, so please make sure that you are uh, adding your questions in the chat box, and we'll make sure to go through those questions at the end. Um, thank you very much for, for joining. So what is Voxen, V-O-C-S-N, stands for Ventilation, Oxygen, Cough, Suction, and Nebulizer. It truly is five separate devices, what is traditionally five separate devices combined into one single device. So uh, most ventilator patients are, are people using a ventilator, are using more than just the ventilator. They oftentimes uh, have to have a suction pump to clear secretions, cough to help clear secretions, nebulizer for um, medication, and then in some instances they may need uh, oxygen. So oftentimes this one singular device uh, requires the need for multiple other pieces of equipment. Boxing combines all five of those in one. What is the challenge of those five pieces of equipment? Well, as I mentioned, when uh, Doug, uh, after Doug's father's diagnosis with ALS and after uh, Doug's father's decision not to go on a mechanical ventilator, uh, really had him questioning, well, well, why is that? And talking to patients and caregivers, and what are the challenges with mechanical ventilation today? Um, and we heard three main themes. One, that uh, mechanical ventilation is complex and it's time consuming to manage all of these different pieces of equipment and to administer care really is a full-time job and it's a really stressful job because ultimately you're dealing with life support equipment. Um, limited portability was kind of the second main theme. You know, we have all of this equipment, and yes, that's keeping our loved one alive, but they're not able to really be mobile. Uh, they can hardly get around the house, let alone leave the house for regularly scheduled doctor's appointments, uh, and all of this equipment is severely hampering portability and mobility. And then finally, uh, it was really difficult to switch between therapies. So as I mentioned, uh, most ventilator patients or people depending on a ventilator are also dependent upon other pieces of equipment. And switching back and forth between ventilation and cough or ventilation and suction uh, was, was really scary, created a lot of anxiety, and was actually very time-consuming and difficult. So with these three things in mind, uh, that's what Doug and the team uh, set out to, to try to solve when they were creating a new device from the ground up. And so... As I mentioned, those five devices, ventilation, oxygen, cuff, suction, and nebulizer, all combined into a single device about the size of your ventilator today. A little bit heavier, but a whole lot uh, smaller than all of the devices uh, that, are, that are used today by people dependent on a ventilator. Um, Voxen works from hospital to home, so it is a full critical care ventilator. It can work in a hospital, in a step-down unit, transport, long-term care facility, and also in the home. It's pediatric, five kilograms and above to adult completely customizable. So patients can get all five therapies or they can get a mix of however many therapies they need. Um, oftentimes, a patient requiring ventilation is requiring at least one other therapy. Rarely are they requiring all five. So Voxin is customizable and will allow the patient to grow into the use. And so you can think about the use case for ALS specifically uh, as a progressive disease. Uh, you might start out just needing ventilation and maybe some mild suction might move to exploring the use of cough and then um, later might actually need uh, oxygen and maybe some nebulizer treatments as well. And as we mentioned at the top of the call, um, uh, FDA cleared since April of 2017. So what is Voxin? It's a critical care ventilator. It's a six liter per minute oxygen concentrator. It's cough assist at the touch of a button, hospital grade suction that's with you at all times and a high performance nebulizer uh, that's actually gonna work in conjunction with uh, the ventilator. We talk a lot about integrated respiratory care and truly Voxin is defining what integrated respiratory care looks like. Traditionally, 
all of these devices have been separate devices made by separate manufacturers with different operating systems. And Voxen truly is integrating them together, not only to make something that's smaller and more convenient, but also to provide benefits of integrated care, which we'll talk about as we go through. So um, the critical care ventilator, the first uh, kind of main function of Voxen, uh, we say critical care because it meets an international standard for safety and accuracy that very few portable ventilators meet. In fact, there's only one other portable ventilator. It's a very high-end transport ventilator, the Hamilton T1, that meets that same ISO standard for safety and accuracy. Essentially what that means for the person using the ventilator is that during shock and vibe or temperature fluctuations, uh, as it's on the back of a wheelchair, you know, going down the cracks on the sidewalk or you know, moving from an air-conditioned home out into the summer heat, uh, Voxen is going to maintain that safe and accurate window of ventilation uh, within a much tighter window than other portable ventilators. And the patient can actually feel that as they're breathing on the ventilator. Uh, it's comprehensive, so it's going to include both invasive and non-invasive ventilation as well as mouthpiece ventilation. So that would be ventilation with a trach or ventilation with a mask as well as kind of a sip and puff uh, for mouthpiece across a comprehensive set of modes and settings. So all of the modes and settings that you're used to seeing today on your typical portable ventilators, some of those are proprietary like AVAPs. Voxen can do those same modes. It's just called something different. We have a comparable set uh, or a sheet that helps you get to the uh, comparable sets of modes and settings that Voxen uh, provides. And then finally, uh, very powerful integrated leak and circuit compensation. Uh, again, that just helps us to be uh, safer and accurate and allows us to really dial in the comfortability of the breathing for the patient. Voxen also has a six liter per minute internal oxygen concentrator, uh, equivalent of six liters per minute capable of doing up to 40% FiO2 in the average adult male. Uh, for most people living with ALS, oxygen is not uh, a needed item, but certainly helpful to have, and with Voxin, you're going to have it at all times, regardless of whether or not you use it. Um, Voxin has the internal concentrator that's actually going to replace a stationary or portable oxygen concentrator or tanks or wall oxygen, um, and it's going to deliver that oxygen through what we call our oxygen direct system. So if you see in that photo there on the right, you see the image of the oxygen tube coming out of Voxin. It's actually going into the circuit, and that tube is actually inside the circuit, and it's delivering the oxygen proximal to the patient, so right at the patient connection to the circuit, delivering the oxygen in the first two-thirds of the breath. So uh, when the patient needs it the most, you know, on the front end of the breath, our oxygen direct system is delivering the oxygen. This is the first and only system in the world to combine ventilation and oxygen together into one comfortable breath for the patient. So traditionally, you'd have two separate devices, be trying to sync those two devices together to deliver that oxygen. You'd be losing a lot of the oxygen out the leak or the exhalation valve of the circuit. You're not actually certain how much oxygen is getting to the patient. With Voxin, we're making the oxygen and we're delivering it directly to the patient. We know exactly how much we're making, exactly how much we're delivering, much more efficient and effective use and delivery of the oxygen um, with Voxin. So that's one of the benefits when we talk about the benefits of integrated respiratory care is the integration of ventilation and oxygen. Moving on to cough, something that uh, many folks on the call uh, are likely familiar with. Um, if you are not, essentially, uh, cough assist is a, a therapy that mimics what um, most folks do on their own. So you and I, when we get sick, we have a cold, um, we cough up those secretions. Uh, if you don't have the ability anymore to do your own cough, there is mechanical insufflation, exufflation, or cough assist device uh, that is going to mimic that cough. It's going to provide a big flow of air in and then a rapid change and quick flow of air out that's going to mimic that cough and bring those secretions up and out of the airway. Um, cough assist, again, is traditionally a separate device. You have to disconnect from your ventilator, connect to your cough assist, do the cough, one, two, three, four, maybe ten coughs, and then connect back to your, you know, maybe then do suction, and then hopefully somebody remembers to reconnect you back to your ventilator. That process can take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, creates a lot of anxiety because you're disconnected from the ventilator during that uh, time period. Um, and what often happens is that while we know um, that cough therapy is a much safer and more effective means of secretion clearance, if you think about it, um, you know, somebody who has the ability to cough on their own, we're not sticking a tube down their throat to remove those secretions from the airway. They're coughing naturally. It's a much more natural and effective means of secretion clearance. 
However, because it's so cumbersome and it requires a separate piece of equipment, what often happens is that it's not done uh, at all or it's not done as frequently as it probably should be uh, to keep up with the patient's secretion. So one of the benefits of integration with Voxin is that ventilation and cough work seamlessly together using the same circuit. Uh, you can see on the screen there we have three simple presets. You can name those and set those however you want. So in this case, we have it named low, medium, and high, and we have all of our pressures set accordingly. And literally, uh, the patient is breathing. I can hit cough or start. It will then administer the cough therapy, and it will go right back to breathing for the patient. So there's no disconnecting that has to happen if the patient is on uh, invasive ventilation with a trach. Uh, if they're on a mask, you might have to switch the mask depending on their ability to capture those secretions in their mouth. Uh, but it makes cough therapy possible in seconds rather than that 10 to 20 minutes, which is traditionally the case with a uh, separate device. So just pausing there on cough therapy, it's a really big deal. And again, one of the benefits of integrated care is this ventilation and cough combined together. So it reduces that anxiety. You're not having to disconnect from the ventilator. Um, it saves time, so it's a lot easier. You're managing one device rather than switching between multiple different devices. You're reducing the risk of infection because you're not having to frequently disconnect that patient circuit. Every time you disconnect the circuit or the tubing from the patient, you're opening that airway to increase the risk of infection. Um, it's designed to increase the uh, compliance. So because it's easier to use, um, you're likely to do it more frequently. Uh, that's the, the easiest way to to make something um, happen more frequently is to make it easier to do. You can also do humidity with a cough. So this is an image of our humidifier bypass that allows the circuit to connect to the humidifier and allows you to do a cough therapy without pulling all of this water back to the ventilator during cough. So we know humidified air for some patients is, uh, is a good thing. However, when you go to do a cough, you're doing it with dr you know, dry, cold, cough because it's a separate device that can't be connected to the humidifier. Here you can keep that system completely connected and this bypass essentially allows the insufflation to the patient to be um, that humidified air and then on exsufflation it has a little check valve here that ensures that all of this water isn't pulled back to the ventilator. You can maintain your oxygen saturation and your PEEP while doing cough uh, again because you're not having to uh, disconnect and then you have that uninterrupted ventilation. So Again, boxing goes from ventilation to cough and then boom, right back to ventilation as soon as the cough therapy is complete. So every breath is supported uh, with cough therapy with boxing. Moving on to the fourth therapy for Voxin, hospital-grade suction. Uh, for many of you who have used portable suction, uh, there are two truths. One is that it's very loud, and two is that it often doesn't work very well. I was actually just listening to a story this morning uh, of a caregiver uh, of, a, of a person living with ALS, and they were talking about the, the struggles that they have with their portable suction. Uh, you flip it on, it's banging on the table, it's loud, it sounds like the tire compressor that you use to pump up the tires in your garage, and then you stick the tube down and you hope that it removes the secretions. Well, with Voxin, because of the way we've designed it, because of the three-piston compressor that we have to drive some of the other therapies, we have really good what we call hospital-grade suction. It's going to work like the in-wall hospital suction system that you see in a hospital, uh, but it's going to be with you at all times. So you see in this image, we have a travel suction canister on the side that can pop on or off. That could be rinsed and reused, or it can be single-use and disposed of. Uh, but that suction canister is going to give you the ability to flip on suction with Voxin and have the ability to do hospital grade suction with you at all times, maintaining those consistent high flows. So as you press and hold at the end of the tubing, you can see that it's not ebbing and flowing. It's set to whatever you have that vacuum pressure set to. It's significantly quieter. So if you have had the opportunity to see Voxin in person and try suction, you see that not only does it work very well, it's significantly quieter than that banging that you're used to with a single piston compressor uh, of a traditional portable suction machine. And then as I mentioned, we have the travel suction canister. We also have an adapter uh, that you can use and you can use your traditional 1200 or 1500 milliliter large canisters as well if this is not enough um, uh, space for you with that 300 milliliter detachable canister. And then finally, the last therapy of Voxin is our high performance nebulizer. So uh, if you do need to 
uh, take medication. Uh, you would use a standard six liter per minute NEB cup that would just attach to the side of Voxin. This nebulizer would go in line with the circuit, proximal to the patient. And two things happen. One, if you've ever used a nebulizer before, you know again, it's a separate device. You um, have your ventilator, you then have your nebulizer, you plug the nebulizer in line with the circuit. Um, what does that do for the patient? Well, they get the ventilator, but they also get all the additional flow coming from the nebulizer. And so they have this high pressure feeling the entire time during the nebulizer treatment. What happens to the ventilator during this period? The ventilator is alarming. It's giving you all these nuisance high pressure alarms. Some ventilators have a nebulizer mode. You can put it into nebulizer mode. All that does is suppress the alarms. It widens out the alarm parameters. So the patient or the person on the ventilator is still feeling all of that high pressure. Again, one of the benefits of integration is that with Voxin, the ventilator and the nebulizer are one system, and so the ventilator can compensate for the additional flow coming from the nebulizer. So you're no longer getting any of those nuisance alarms. It's much more comfortable for the person breathing on the ventilator and getting that nebulizer treatment, and all of your alarms are still active. So if I do get a high-pressure alarm in the middle of a neb treatment, I know that I have a a blockage or a kink in the circuit, or I need to do cough or suction, and then go back to my nebulizer treatment. Whereas, uh, again, if you put another device in that nebulizer mode, those alarm parameters have been widened out, and you're not clued into those um, instances of, of uh, high pressure event that might be occurring during a neb treatment. And then again, as with many things in Voxin, it's going to be significantly quieter than traditional devices in a traditional nebulizer that's a separate system. So all five of those therapies uh, in one device, which is smaller and more convenient, certainly, but also has the benefits of that integrated care. But you can now also monitor what's going on across all five of those therapies. So um, this is just some images of the, the monitors that you can actually customize left to right, top to bottom to make your charting really easy and efficient. Um, you can also tab down and I can see all of the settings for my patient and then what my um, monitors are for the patients. So I like to say, what have I set? And then what am I getting? You can also see very accurate waveforms on Voxin. You can really be able to dial in, you know, is the patient triggering the breath? What's going on? And be able to really um, dial in their settings so that they can be very comfortable on the uh, device. And then Voxin in the event log is tracking up to 7,300 events. Those are alarms, settings changes, control changes. And all of that information feeds into what we just launched um, literally this month and we'll be rolling out um, next month and into 2020 is what we're calling MultiView. So again, Voxin not only combines all five therapies, you now have the ability to see what's going on with your patient across all five of those, um, those therapies. So as we know, uh, somebody who's using a ventilator, that's only part of the equation. If I just have the ventilator data, I don't know how frequently and uh, are they doing cough and suction and what are their oxygen sets. All of this information is now recorded uh, on Voxin because it's one system and served up in this multi-view report. So this is just one page example. This is the high level trending summary, but you can begin to see on here, I'm looking at a 30 day report and I can see that ventilation was used all 30 days, oxygen was used 25 days, Cough was used 28 days, section 20, and nebulizer all 30 days. But then I can also see how frequently, or not only uh, the usage, but all of the settings as well, and trends. So it's hard to see on this report, but I can see here we use cough 28 days, but in the last seven days I've seen a 50% increase in cough for this particular patient. So I can begin to ask questions as a caregiver or as a respiratory therapist or as my a DME owner or as a physician to say, what's going on? Why do we do so much cough therapy? Are we starting to get sick? Is there an infection? Do we need to treat it with some uh, medication through a nebulizer before uh, that infection becomes an exacerbation and a readmittance to the hospital? So this is the first and only time where we can now get a complete view into what's going on with the person using the ventilator. This is a really big deal and has many applications that uh, frankly we're not even aware of yet. Um, if you can think of uh, many people living with ALS are doing uh, Botox treatments to help reduce the secretions. Uh, and then you're tracking, well, are we seeing suction? Are we seeing less, fewer and fewer secretions as we increase uh, those treatments? You will now begin to see how frequently you're using suction and at what pressures and begin to have some hard data to answer questions like, is this an effective treatment for me or not 
rather than just kind of the anecdotal, yeah, I think I'm getting less fewer secretions, or it seems like we're doing suction therapy less often. Uh, you now have all of that information in this multi-view report. Um, this report will be available. Uh, you can literally stick a USB in the back of Oxen, hit export and download that information, stick the USB in your computer, go to our website and get this report. Uh, into next year, we'll have the ability to have a small module on the back of Oxen that will be an LTE or cellular connection uh, where you would be able to remotely uh, send this information from Voxen to the cloud and log in on the cloud to be able to uh, see this data. And then also a version for the hospital where they would be able to monitor multiple devices in a hospital wing at a central station in real time. So really excited about MultiView and kind of the next step of being able to get data and information on what's going on with the person using the ventilator. So we like to say Voxin is simple, mobile, and care changing. Um, you've got that one circuit, very easy to, to learn and to set up so you can think about what the discharge process looks like today, uh, and particularly with ALS as it progresses and you continue to add, you know, every time you go to a doctor's visit, you're adding another device. Now you can leave with one device and understand and be comfortable with that one device. And, the way you operate oxygen works the same way that you um, operate cough or ventilation. It's the same operating system uh, and makes that process a lot easier for uh, caregivers. Obviously, it's mobile, goes without saying. It's 70% lighter and smaller than the other devices. You have up to nine hours of onboard battery. You have an internal battery, and on either side, you have two removable, hot swappable batteries. Uh, that's going to give you pretty much all the battery power that you need for a day. You also have the ability to plug into a wheelchair. We have a power cord uh, that's actually 24 volts, so you don't need a converter. You can go directly from the ventilator directly into your chair. Um, and then care changing. So we talked about the integrated therapy delivery with Voxin, the ability to do touch button cough and uninterrupted ventilation between those therapies. Uh, and because you're not disconnecting the circuit, you're designed to reduce the risk of infection. Folks often say, well, great, you put all five of those in one device, that seems a lot more convenient, but my suction pump is breaking all the time, and uh, I always have issues with my other devices, and now my ventilator is going to break all of the time. That sounds like a terrible idea. We completely agree, and that would be true if we took all five of the existing devices that are all uh, at least a decade old technology and put them into one uh, box. The reality was we had to redesign and reconfigure every part in Voxin to make it smaller and more energy efficient and make it work together. And so in doing so, we took the latest in engineering technology, over-engineered all of these components to um, 50,000 hour lifespan, tested them to 30,000 hours, and all of the components uh, go through a 10,000 hour preventative maintenance cycle. So just like your ventilators today, Every 10,000 hours, they're considered a frequent and substantial service item. Uh, your DME is going to take that ventilator, uh, give you another ventilator, and then put that ventilator through its 10,000 hour preventative maintenance process. With Voxin, the same thing is gonna happen. Uh, and again, everything's been designed to that 30,000 hour lifespan, uh, but at 10,000 hours, it's gonna get checked out. And you're not just checking out your ventilator, you're checking out all five of those therapies. So. Uh, if you think about your traditional devices today, when was the last time you did preventative maintenance on your cough assist or your suction pump or your nebulizer? Uh, the answer is likely uh, you don't, and you just wait for it to break, and then you then replace it. Uh, with Voxin, we're constantly looking at all of those components. And again, everything has been redesigned uh, to last a lot longer. So if you go back to that example of the portable suction pump, one of the reasons it's banging and it's making so much noise and it's so loud is that it's one piston going back and forth, uh, working its little heart out to try to provide that suction pressure. With Voxin, you can see here we have a three piston compressor. It runs a lot slower, creates a lot less heat and wear and tear. It also creates a lot less noise, but because it has those three pistons, it can provide that consistent high flow. So um, we like to say Voxin is engineered tough uh, and that they're gonna, that Voxin is gonna last well beyond the typical preventative maintenance schedules uh, that you're used to for your ventilators today. Talked a lot about the benefits of integration, uh, obviously increased mobility, reduced noise, which is a really big deal when you think about trying to be out in the world and go to a movie theater or go to a public event and you've got to do suction or you've got to do cough and it's super noisy. Obviously that reduced noise plays a big uh, part in you know, quality of life. 
very easy to use operating system. So it's a touch screen, it's icon based. It works much like your cell phone or your smartphone today and a lot less like the complicated medical devices that you may be used to. Uh, user empowerment, we actually have some people with ALS on Voxin who are able to do their own cough assist or able to do their own suction because literally all of that can be done now with the touch of a button without having to manage a bunch of additional pieces of equipment. Um, much more comfortable as you can really dial in the settings and you're not having to disconnect and have unsupported ventilator breaths as you're tr transitioning between different therapies uh, designed to reduce that risk of infection and then the increased user compliance because you have everything with you at all times. Uh, we like to talk about this idea of one. So Voxin literally streamlines care from the prescription to payment and everything in between. So it's one device to prescribe, it's one device to learn, one device to clean, one alarm to silence, one device to transport, one device to charge, one power supply to carry, one circuit for all the therapies, one touch to operate, one device to monitor, and now one code to bill. We could continue to go on and on about the idea of one, but it really provides a lot of uh, um, uh, just ease and streamlines what care looks like for somebody uh, who is on a ventilator. So how do you get Voxin? We talk about this one code to bill. Uh, let's dive into that a little bit more. Obviously, that is the whole point of our call today. So how do I get Voxin? First of all, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what is E0467. So because Voxin uh, is truly the first and only integrated piece of medical equipment uh, that has ever existed, so even outside of respiratory care, there is no other piece of DME or durable medical equipment um, that has combined multiple therapies into one. Uh, Voxin doesn't just combine two, it combines five. So it really is in a category unto its own. And because of that, CMS uh, created a new code that went into effect uh, January of this year uh, for Voxin and a multifunction ventilator. There were a lot of things that are different about Voxin as far as the ownership schedules, uh, as far as uh, the uh, eligibility for, for how you understand um, whether or not somebody is eligible for Voxin. So there were a lot of things that they needed to figure out and CMS decided that it would be much easier to create an entirely new code uh, for Voxin. So a HICPIC code or HCPCS code uh, is a code that CMS creates, and um, that's what most Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurers use to identify a piece of equipment and then set an allowable or a reimbursement amount, as well as qualifications and eligibility requirements around that device. So HICPIC code E0467 was created for Voxin. Uh, this is unlike E0465 or E0466, which are for invasive and non-invasive ventilators or traditional ventilators today. Uh, cough assist, suction pump, nebulizers all have their own codes as well. So when you begin to look at this and you know multiple different devices billing multiple different codes with multiple different eligibility requirements, you're now focused on one code and one uh, set of eligibility requirements. Um, Voxin is the only device that is categorized as a multifunction ventilator. So uh, when you read the rule, it defines a multifunction ventilator as a single device that integrates a ventilator, an oxygen concentrator, cough assist, suction pump, and nebulizer. Um, and it's different from traditional codes in that it streamlines the eligibility, so you have less paperwork. Uh, you have a single DME provider. So if you think of the um, process today, you might have one DME provider who is providing your equipment in the home for your ventilator and another provider who might be providing your oxygen equipment and yet another provider who might be providing your uh, cough or your suction. You now have one single provider who provides this one piece of equipment. Uh, the equipment is rented, so just like your ventilators today, uh, the DME is reimbursed on a monthly basis by insurance for the rental of this device and your use of the device. Um, and it's classified as that frequent and substantial servicing. So as we talked about earlier, uh, you no longer need to worry about the maintenance of equipment or equipment ownership. Um, oxygen, cough, suction, and NEB, we'll focus on cough, suction, and NEB. Those three devices, after 13 months of use, the ownership transfers over to you today with traditional devices, meaning that in month 14 or 15, after you have taken ownership of that cough assist and it breaks, you're on the hook to be fixing that device or to you know, get a replacement device. The DME is no longer getting a monthly payment for the management, service, or usage of that device. Now with Voxin, 
You don't need to worry about owning any of this, this equipment. It's something that will be provided to you month, by, month over month uh, by your DME supplier. So now that we understand EO467, it's a little bit different, kind of a category unto its own. Uh, what is the process for getting a Vox in? Well, you really need to connect three dots. It's the physician, the provider, and the payer. We'll kind of walk through each of these step by step and be very clear um, about what the process looks like. So number one, you're going to talk to your physician. You're going to see if Voxin is right for you. And ultimately, you would need a prescription from your uh, pr provider for a multifunction ventilator. Now, technically, if they've already prescribed a ventilator, they prescribed an invasive or non-invasive ventilator, uh, you don't necessarily need a multifunction ventilator on the script, uh, but it certainly doesn't help, and it helps to move the conversation along with your DME and your uh, insurer. Uh, second step is going to your provider. So who is your DME company? You might have a durable medical equipment company or home health company that you work with today. Um, you'll want to see if they provide Voxin. If not, you'll want to see if they are interested in providing Voxin. And if not, you will then want to find another DME provider who is providing Voxin. And then finally, uh, you won't be submitting the request, but your DME would then submit a request for uh, payment from your insurance company, and you certainly can be part of that process. So we'll talk through uh, those three items now. So number one, talking to your doctor and determining eligibility. So um, as I mentioned, all of these devices are prescription devices. So you have to have a prescription to use Voxin. You have to have a prescription to use any of those five different therapies. Um, it looks like something happened to our plus sign here, but very simply, um, to be eligible for Voxin, you have to have a prescription from your doctor for a ventilator, so invasive or non-invasive, doesn't matter, some mask or trach, plus, and just imagine there's a little plus right there, one additional therapy, so oxygen, cough, suction, or NEP. Very easy or typical, any invasive ventilator patient who's using a ventilator in the home is required to have a portable suction pump uh, in the home as well. So any invasive ventilator user would also then have suction and then would qualify uh, for Voxin based on the ventilator plus one additional therapy. Now your doctor can certainly give you a prescription for more than just ventilation plus suction. They could give you a script for cough and nebulizer, but you only need vent plus one other to be eligible for Voxin under E0467. The eligibility for a multifunction ventilator follows the same medical necessity as existing devices today. So the same process for determining whether or not uh, the doctor can write a script for a ventilator or the doctor can write a script for oxygen or cough, the same process is the, is, exists for Voxin as well. Um, the only difference being that you need to qualify for a vent plus one additional therapy. And again, you know, a majority of ventilator patients will also need at least one additional therapy. One thing to keep in mind is that prior equipment use can impact your eligibility for Voxin. This is something that we're working on with CMS. It was an unintended um, uh, reading of the way they wrote the law, but um, essentially patients who are using cough, suction, and nebulizer for less than 13 months are eligible for Voxin or more than 60 months. And if they've been using oxygen for less than 36 months, or more than 60 months are eligible for Voxin as well. However, if you've been using cough suction and nebulizer between that 13 and 60 month period, or oxygen between that 36 and 60 month period, that will preclude you right now from getting access to Voxin. Essentially, as we mentioned earlier, after that 13 month period, you become the owner of cough suction or neb, whatever device you might be using, or all three. And in the eyes of CMS or Medicare or most private insurers, they've already paid for that device. You now own that device. And giving you Voxin would be a uh, duplicate device that they've already paid for. So um, a rule called same or similar is what is impacting the eligibility there. Again, that's something that we're working on with CMS. They recognize that, um, that this is limiting the number of people who are able to get access to Voxin, uh, particularly in the ALS community as it's progressive and you might have been prescribed cough or suction or nebulizer maybe 15 months ago and now you're at the point where you need a ventilator and you want Voxin, but you might have already used some of these other therapies. Uh, it's something that we're working on with them, but for right now it's good to be aware that uh, you want to get that prescription for Voxin earlier before you cap out or become an owner of any of these other 
therapies. Uh, we do have a sample of oxygen prescription on our website. We also have a multifunction ventilator checklist, which will walk through what are the requirements for getting a ventilator and what are the requirements for oxygen, cough, suction, or NEB. Again, your doctor or healthcare professional is going to know all of those, but there are some resources on our website. If you click on um, the uh, users and caregivers, uh, you would be able to access that information. So what does that conversation look like with your doctor? Uh, very simple conversation. Hey, I've heard about Voxin. It's this multifunction ventilator. I think it would be good for me and my caregivers. Uh, I need a ventilator, plus I need at least one of these other therapies, and so I think I would be eligible. Can we talk about Voxin and see if it's right for me? So a very simple script kind of help you have that conversation with your doctor. We are doing a lot of education to create awareness among physicians, but you very well in your conversation with your physician, it might be the first time that they're hearing about Voxin. And so we want to arm you with the educational materials that you need to kind of present that to your physician. Step number two, so we've got our prescription from our doctor. Our doctor is comfortable with Voxin. They're excited about it. We now need to find a DME company to support Voxin's use in the home. So this works very similar to the process that you've gone through today. If you are already using some of this equipment in the home, you likely know who your DME provider is. Um, if you're going through this process, ultimately you will find a DME provider. Your physician, uh, physician's office will often put you in touch with uh, some DME providers that they've worked with in the past that they know service um, your type of ventilation and your, uh, where you live. Uh, but that DME uh, company is going to be the one that will ultimately uh, own your device and set it up and provide the supplies and the services and help you learn how to use uh, the device. So they'll be providing your circuits on you know, a monthly or bimonthly basis. Um, the circuits are the tubing that's going to connect the person to Voxin, um, and they are really a critical partner in this process. Um, if you already have a DME company, you can go to them and see if they provide Voxin. If they don't, uh, you can inquire about whether or not they are interested in providing Voxin, and we are happy to have a conversation with them, show them Voxin, talk to them about what being a Voxin provider looks like. Otherwise, you can go to our website. We've got the link there, ventechlife.com forward slash DME, and you can find companies by state that support Voxin. Um, as you'll see on that list, uh, just because they support that state doesn't necessarily mean they will support your specific neighborhood. So uh, you might have to call one or two of those companies to find somebody who will support uh, your neighborhood. But again, we can also help you identify a DME company that supports Voxin uh, that also supports your area. Um, to do, to do, I think that is it. So um, this is a really critical partner for you. You want to find a DME that uh, will provide really good care for you in the home and also a DME that is supporting Voxin. We can help you in that process. The DME finder is a good first step. Uh, we also have a lot of Voxin training, so ventechlife.com forward slash training. We have information for you uh, and your caregivers to learn about Voxin and how to use Voxin. Um, and also we provide a lot of hands-on and in-person training for any new DME partners that we onboard with Voxin to make sure they are fully uh, capable and uh, able to support Voxin. We also do have a 24-7 clinical support line that either the DME or uh, caregivers in the home can call if a question comes up. Uh, they're trying to do something with Voxin or something happens with Voxin. They're not sure what's going on. Uh, we have a 24-hour um, helpline as well. And then finally, the third step is talking to your insurance company. So Medicare, Medicaid, and or private insurance. So Voxin is covered. Uh, E0467, as we mentioned, is a new uh, code. It went into effect January of this year for Medicare. Medicare created an allowable rate for every state. Um, so it is 100% covered under, um, or sorry, there is 100% coverage across the U.S. under Medicare for Voxin. Um, Medicaid, state by state, those states are adopting the code. Uh, we are working with all of the states. We have about 35 states who have it properly listed. Uh, other states, you can still bill it, but you will need a prior authorization, and we're working with each of these states to onboard and adopt the code. I will actually be meeting with Minnesota Medicaid uh, literally this Friday to uh, educate them about E0467. Um, the insurance provider is then going to provide your DME with a monthly 
rate for the cost of Voxin that includes the service and supplies such as the circuits that they will be providing to you. Depending on your insurance, there may be a copay. It's going to be likely very similar to um, the copay that you would be paying on the other respiratory devices that you may be using today or if you were to be using traditional devices. Your DME will then submit uh, the physician prescription, all the supporting documentation to your insurance company for reimbursement. Um, they will be on the front lines of that. If there are questions, we do have a team that can help support them. Uh, this is you know, a new billing process. It's a new code. It's significantly easier than billing for multiple devices and trying to track payments of, across those multiple codes. Uh, but it is a different process and we'll work with the DME through that and we'll also work if you're billing a private insurer for the first time, um, they might not be aware of Voxin and so we'll work to provide awareness about what is Voxin. It's not experimental, it's the same five therapies that uh, have been used traditionally, they're just combined into one device, educate them about uh, Medicare and EO467 and the eligibility criteria that they've created around it. So. Um, Oftentimes, you don't need to worry about the insurance piece of it. Your DME will work on that, but uh, in some instances, it might behoove you to be involved in that process as well or to loop uh, the Ventec team into that process, and we're happy to support you and your DME on the billing side of things. We do have a sample insurance letter. We've got a bunch of supporting documentation for insurers. Um, particularly the private insurance companies who might not be aware of Voxin yet. We do have a lot of the major uh, insurance companies who have already provided payment for Voxin, but as many of you know on the phone, uh, each of those insurers operates differently in each state. Um, one thing that we would encourage you to look at is consider billing both your primary um, as well as your secondary uh, insurance. So. Um, we can help work through some of these insurance uh, issues as they arise. If they do arise, uh, you can always email info at venticlife.com uh, and we can connect uh, with you and your DME provider. Um, but the main key here is that uh, there is a process or there is insurance coverage for Voxin. Uh, it does behoove you to start the conversation early with your physician, with your DME, and perhaps your insurance company uh, to let them know that you have a desire to use Voxin to begin that process. And then we're here to help. Uh, as we mentioned at the top of the call, I know we had a few folks join us after we got started, but we do have uh, Kelly on the line. Kelly has recently joined us as our Director of Home Care Services, and it is her sole uh, mission to help uh, successfully uh, transition patients from uh, the hospital to home or transition patients uh, as they are needing mechanical ventilation to uh, make that process seamless, connect them with DMEs, connect them, uh, answer any questions that their physician might have, uh, and to also work through any insurance questions that they have. So uh, if Kelly's line is unmuted, I'll turn it over to her to just say hello as well. I'm here. Hi, everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, as they said, my name is Kelly Sigurdsson. I am the new Director of Home Care Services for Ventec Life, working, trying to uh, connect all of you and whoever um, you know, needs more information to Voxen. Um, as a patient and caregiver, nav navigating the world of healthcare can be daunting, even for those of us who have made it our profession. Our hope is that by developing and offering the tools and resources Chris introduced today that they'll facilitate conversations with your healthcare team. I know that many of you know this, but an excellent resource for any challenges um, accessing what you need is your physician and their team, um, often as a case manager um, like myself who works within the, the um, office who helps to facilitate those conversations. Um, and they are, tend to be your best advocate uh, when a person makes the choice of ventilator support, we want to give you the option um, that enhances quality of life for you and your caregivers. Our goal is to smooth the way um, towards helping you access Voxin and, and are proud to be partnering with you towards supporting you to maximize your quality of life. Um, Chris did a great job today of detailing out um, you know, how steps, how to get um, access. Um, there, as he said, too, some challenges, but my job is to help uh, try and smooth those challenges and work beside you to get to, um, to what you need. 
Um, thank you. And as um, Chris said, too, you can contact me. You can see here on the um, slide how to contact me, but also through the website. Um, and then we can work together. Excellent. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so just a quick review, five to do five-step to-do list to get Voxin, uh, start early, understand EO467. Again, ventilator plus one of the four other therapies is your trigger to then be eligible for Voxin. You want to make sure you don't already own any of those other devices. Have a conversation with your doctor. Find a DME partner that's going to really uh, be your champion through the process. Submit a claim to insurance, and then if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. We have a ton of information on our website, ventechlife.com. We have a users and family section, which is going to guide you through the DME finder, some additional information. If you go to ventechlife.com forward slash ALS, we have information specifically related to the ALS community, including a lot of great stories of other people living with ALS who are using Voxin. We also have partnered with Your ALS Guide. Uh, YourALSGuide.com. Uh, they actually just put out a, an entire respiratory guide walking you through beyond just Voxin. What does it look like to have those conversations about respiratory care? What does insurance look like? What are the options for invasive versus non-invasive ventilation? A uh, lot of great information. Encourage you to check out uh, YourALSGuide.com. If you go to backslash Voxin, you'll get some information and additional videos specifically about Voxin and ALS. So what does it look like talking to your DME? What does insurance look like? Uh, how do you use all of the different therapies? A wealth of information there. Uh, highly encourage you to spend some time checking out uh, that website. And some frequently asked questions. As we mentioned at the top of the call, um, I think we are, we're starting to see a couple questions there in the chat box. Please feel free to put your questions in there and we'll spend the remaining time here at the end of the call to go through some of those questions. Answering two of those right off the bat uh, that we get oftentimes, uh, do I qualify for two Voxin? Um, it's a good question and it's highly dependent. Uh, the, the good news is that nothing about Voxin is different than your traditional devices uh, when it comes to this question. So the rules for a second ventilator or a backup ventilator are the same as they are um, today for traditional ventilators. Um, and you need to prove that medical necessity for that backup device. Oftentimes that medical necessity follows the guidance of one of two things, either mobility or safety. So you have a bedside ventilator and you have a ventilator that's connected to your wheelchair, uh, and it would be uh, difficult to disconnect it from the wheelchair and move it bedside, and so you need an additional device to be fully connected to the wheelchair at all times. And then secondly, safety, uh, if they're an invasive ventilator patient or they're completely dependent on the ventilator to breathe and any disruption at all would cause harm to the patient, uh, you can make the justification for a backup device. We have many uh, people living with ALS who are using Boxin who have been able to uh, make the justification for a bedside and a mobile ventilator uh, and qualify for reimbursement of two Voxin in the home. Again, that's different for every person depending upon uh, their current condition and their insurance provider, uh, but certainly we have plenty of instances where uh, there are two Voxin in the home. And then finally, how much will Voxin cost me? Uh, this is highly dependent on where you live, what your insurance, who your insurance provider is, and a variety of other factors. Um, the co-pays and other costs are going to vary, but um, they're not going to be all that different from what you're either paying today with traditional equipment or what you would be paying if you were using traditional equipment. So it's fairly, um, you know, Voxin might be slightly higher, might be around the same, could even be less. Uh, we've seen all three of those, and it's highly dependent upon, um, you know, your where you live and your insurance provider. So. Uh, even more reason to start that conversation early with your physician, your DME provider, as well as your um, uh, insurance provider. So a couple questions here in uh, and, and the great. chat. Chris, this is, yep. Chris, this is Cynthia. So um, thank you so much. You know, you were correct. Uh, my computer clock is a few minutes fast, and we actually launched the webinar a few minutes early. 
So before we go to some of those questions that were submitted in the, in the chat box, I just wanted to review some um, notations you made early in your presentation, and that was that this is a new class of, of ventilator. It was FDA um, cleared in 2017, and it was designed by engineers experienced with both ventilators and ALS, and that this is a DME benefit that's covered by both Medicare and many other insurance payers. Um, I believe some of our questions may be related to some of the information you shared earlier. So um, let's go to some of those questions folks have submitted. Um, we do have one that's related to the device having the availability of online monitoring. Um, I know you shared information about the monitoring and the reporting. Can you highlight that again? Sure thing. Um, so we do have the ability right now on the device itself to be able to see what's gone, what's happened across all five therapies. Uh, we will have the ability in early 2020 uh, to have a separate smaller device that you would plug into the USB port on the back of Voxin that would have cellular connectivity that would send the information from Voxin to the cloud and allow you to monitor the device, not in real time, on a slight delay intentionally, um, anywhere from a couple of minutes to, you know, longer um, set by your DME provider where you would be able to monitor what's going on with the patient. And again, uh, traditionally you can do that on some devices, but you can only do that with ventilation, and that's only a small window into what's going on with the overall health of uh, the patient. So we're very excited about multi-view, which is what uh, we're calling our reporting because it is providing a view beyond just ventilation across all five of those therapies. And uh, as we expand it, you'll be able to add on additional monitoring functionality and include that in that comprehensive reporting as well. Um, also a question about auto adjusting EPAP. Um, it's not something that we have right now, um, but something that we are uh, we have received feedback for and uh, we'll be building into uh, the feature set in probably 2020. So Chris, can you re review again? This is a multifunction ventilator, so it provides features in addition to ventilation, the, the oxygen, the suction, um, the cough feature, as well as the nebulization. But um, this ventilator provides support for people using non-invasive and invasive ventilation? Correct. Uh, so it works for invasive, non-invasive, and mouthpiece ventilation. So pretty much any ventilator patient uh, who needs uh, any type of ventilation plus any combination of the additional therapies, Voxin is going to be able to uh, meet their needs. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing that comes across our desk very frequently um, Benefit coverage um, is, is certainly confusing. Um, what is clear, though, is that there is real value in investigating respiratory equipment options early as you develop your strategic care plan. Um, can you tell me uh, what, and I think you had a slide there earlier, what the best first steps would be if someone diagnosed with ALS is getting to the point in their disease where their respiratory system is being impacted? Um, what's their best first step with regard to reaching out to their clinical team or to their insurance company to find out um, what options might be most appropriate and covered? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's uh, you know certainly not a conversation that uh, folks are excited to have. Um, you know, as uh, the disease is progressing, uh, we know that it will come to that point, um, and you want to be able to have those conversations early. Uh, to be fully informed on what the options are for a variety of different, you know, ventilation options um, before, you know, those decisions are forced upon you and they become, uh, you know, a critical situation where, you know, you're sitting in the, in the hospital or in the ER. So definitely talking to your physician, talking to your respiratory therapist, um, making sure you have a good DME provider in the home talking about, you know, what are your ventilation options? It, you know, it doesn't just have to be a, a trach. It can also be non-invasive in some instances, uh, like a mask. In some instances, instances it can be uh, mouthpiece ventilation as well or a sip and puff. So there are a variety of options. Uh, I think the respiratory guide that um, 
uh, your ALS guide just came out with does a really good job of walking through what those options are and gives you a variety of different ventilators and other devices as well to say, this is how you can begin to have that early conversation so that you and your caregivers are in charge and making decisions that aren't forced and aren't rushed um, when the situation becomes critical. So definitely having the conversation early. Um, you know, the benefit with Voxin is that you can get that one device right off the bat, and as you need additional therapies, you can turn on those therapies uh, as they become needed and prescribed by your physician. Uh, but you're not constantly going back to the doctor for each follow-up visit and getting a new device that you have to learn and bring home. You can have that one device, and it can grow with you uh, as your needs grow. Great. Thing. And as you know, many people with ALS have multiple pieces of, of equipment to address either their ventilation or, or airway clearance needs. Um, and some of it is, is cap rental, and, and some of it is ongoing rental. Um, Depending on, on where someone is in the course of their disease, um, what would be the best first step to find out if you're already using one or more pieces of equipment to understand whether or not Voxin would be available to you? Is that a phone call to your doctor or your, uh, to Ms. Kelly or to your Voxin 800 number? Um, what yep, would be the best a first step? It's a great question. So if you're already using any of this equipment, your first step is to be to go to your uh, equipment provider and to your physician uh, to understand how long you've been using that equipment. Uh, if you are the owner of that equipment, for instance, if you've been using cough suction or nebulizer for greater than 13 months, you become the owner of that equipment uh, unbeknownst to you. Um, and that could preclude you from being able to get access to Voxin. So you want to have that conversation with your DME provider. Your physician would also know how long you've been prescribed that equipment and could give you some insight into what that timeline looks like if you don't know yourself. Um, and then having a conversation with both your doctor and your DME provider to say, hey, before I become the owner of this equipment, I want to switch over to a multifunction ventilator and have access to all five of those devices in one machine. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Um, again, we have a large number of folks on the webinar, and that is why the incoming lines are muted, but the chat box is open. So if you have a question or comment, kindly submit that in the chat box, and we can review that. Chris, while you are on the line and that chat box is still open, I think we have another couple of minutes left. Um, can you share with us any experiences of people that have ALS that are, are using the boxes? How does that impact their life with regard to their ability to get out or, or travel easier or, or really any challenges they, they might be having in addition? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and definitely encourage folks to go to ventechlife.com forward slash ALS, where we feature a lot of those stories. Uh, Pat Quinn uh, comes to mind, uh, co-founder of the Ice Bucket Challenge uh, in Yonkers, New York. Uh, just an amazing uh, individual and in all that he has accomplished uh, since his diagnosis. Um, he's been using boxing now for a few months and is really excited about the portability that it's afforded him. Uh, his father, Pat Quinn Sr., uh, is equally excited about the convenience of having all five therapies with him at all times uh, and not having to make the decision that we're going to leave something at home because we're only going down the street uh, for dinner or just knowing that he's got all of it at all times and that he can get out of the house in a couple of minutes as opposed to spending upwards of an hour packing up all of the equipment and using his checklist to make sure he hasn't left a power cord or a battery or something behind. So we actually have quite a few videos uh, from Pat and his father, as well as other uh, people living with ALS who are using uh, Voxin. Uh, the Gleason House in uh, New Orleans is Steve Gleason, as many of you will be familiar with. Um, he has a um, house of uh, nine, eight or nine uh, residents who are all living with ALS and using the latest and greatest technology um, to be as independent as possible. And they've been using Voxin now for over a year 
uh, and have been able to uh, be a lot more mobile, but also benefit from some of the benefits that we talked about related to integrated care and having ventilation and cough delivered seamlessly with the touch of a button, meaning they're now doing cough therapy much more frequently than they were doing before. So both the portability and the mobility is kind of the one thing that we hear over and over again, but also just the ability to uh, maintain compliance with doctor's orders uh, with all of these therapies um, provides a lot more um, uh, you know, clinical outcomes as well as uh, uh, comfort for uh, the people uh, breathing on the ventilator. Great. And Chris, it looks like there are a variety of folks on this webinar, including clinicians. So if there are clinicians associated with Durable Medical Equipment Company and they wanted more information about how they might carry Boxin, um, where could they reach out for more information? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they can visit our website. We've got a, a contact form that they can fill out or they can simply email info at ventechlife.com. Uh, we can follow up uh, if they're a DME or they work for a DME. Uh, we can have one of our local representatives visit them and provide an in-person demonstration of Voxin and talk to them about what it looks like to provide Voxin to their patients. Um, I see we also have some questions about cost and, um, you know, very happy to talk openly about cost with Voxin. Uh, generally, you're going to find the cost of Voxin to be uh, on par, maybe slightly more than what it's going to cost to buy all of the individual devices and components and accessories for those devices. Um, so cost uh, shouldn't be a factor for uh, those DMEs. Um, and you know, we have plenty of DMEs now. We have coverage across pretty much all 50 states uh, of DMEs providing uh, Voxin to their patients. So happy to uh, talk to any uh, smaller or larger or regional DMEs to get them on board as well. I see. And respiratory therapists or clinical specialists are available to train both clinicians, DME companies, uh, respiratory therapists at, at hospitals or home care, and uh, trained people that are using this equipment in their home? Correct. Uh, we have a bunch of training at ventechlife.com forward slash uh, training. Uh, where we have a lot of online videos that will walk through each of the different uh, functions of Voxin, how to um, manually make settings changes, et cetera. But we also provide a lot of in-person training as well. Uh, we are developing with the American Association of Respiratory Care two courses that will be four credit uh, courses as well, so continuing education credits uh, related to integrated respiratory care with Voxin. So plenty of training opportunities for uh, respiratory therapists as well as just general caregivers uh, who are interested in learning more um, about how to, how to care for um, people using Voxin. And it's actually quite exciting because Voxin is so easy to use and it's one device versus multiple devices. Uh, we see a lot of individuals who previously didn't want to touch respiratory equipment or deal with respiratory equipment um, excited to care for uh, patients who are using Voxin. So uh, as we know, caregivers are finding caregivers to um, work with people who are using life support ventilation can often be very difficult. Uh, and Voxin, because of its ease of use and the integration into one device, is actually opening the doors to provide more of those um, caregivers who are willing to work with this kind of equipment. Great. Thanks so much. Chris, um, that was uh, a very comprehensive overview um, of the features, the benefits, and the access um, process associated with this new class of multi-function uh, ventilator. So appreciate your time and Kelly's time this afternoon. As indicated earlier, this entire webinar is being recorded for the convenience of those on the call, as well as for those that may not have been able to join us this afternoon. And you can find that at alsa.org. That should be posted within 24 hours. Otherwise, you're certainly welcome to reach out to Voxen directly for additional information. Our chat box is still open, and even with my uh, computer clock running fast. We are coming to the top of the hour. So if there are no other questions submitted in the chat box, I'll thank you all again for joining us and wish you safety this fall afternoon. Have a good afternoon. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the time, everyone. Thank you, Cynthia. Bye thank all. you, everyone.